All praise to the Most High. So tonight's topic, we're going over the parables of wisdom, the parables of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay, let's open up with the book of John chapter 8, verse 32. Let's start there. Okay, I'm going to go into the topic now, but let's go over John chapter 8, verse 32. In the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Read what you got. The book of John chapter 8, verse 32. Come on. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. You see that? The Lord is saying you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Because as a people, we don't know the truth. We don't know how to explain what the truth is. We lost and confused about what the truth is. But our Lord and Savior says what? Read that again. Because John chapter 8 verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Because we are not free this day. We are still in captivity. Okay, get that in Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. So we understand we are still this day. We are yet this day in our captivity. Where the Lord has scattered us because of our sins. Okay, read that. The book of Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. Come on. We are scattered us for a reproach and a curse. Mm -hmm. And to be subject to payment. Right. According to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. You see that? So it says, we are yet this day in our captivity. We are still this day in slavery. You understand? We have not been delivered yet. The Lord is reviving our spirits in these last days. Before the physical deliverance, we must be spiritually delivered. Okay? That's what the Lord our Savior, that's what our Lord and Savior Christ is saying unto us. Go back to John 8, 32 again. The book of John chapter 8, verse 32. Go ahead. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Why? Because we are yet this day in our captivity. We're still in slavery. You understand? We are still in captivity this day. Understand that thing. Get that in Romans chapter 2 so we understand what the truth is. Romans chapter 2. Yeah. No, Romans chapter 2 and verse 20. Read that. The book of Romans chapter 2, verse 20. Go ahead. An instructor of the foolish. We are the instructor of the foolish of our people. We are the instructor of the foolish of our people. You understand? Read. A teacher of babes. A teacher of babes because why? Children in this truth. Okay, come on. Which has the form of knowledge. And of the truth in the law. You see what the truth of the, of the Most High God is found in the laws. The truth is found in God's laws. So when Christ says, go back to John 8, 32. When he says he shall know the truth. He says you shall find the truth in the law. And the, the truth that is found in God's laws. That's going to deliver you from captivity. Read what, read what you got. John 8, 32 again. The book of John chapter 8, verse 32. Right? And ye shall know the truth. And the mm -hmm. truth shall make you free. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Because once you know the truth in the law, you're going to get delivered from captivity. That's what he's saying right there. Verse 36. Verse 36. Mm -hmm. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. If the Son of Man, the Son of God, is going to deliver us and make us free, we are truly going to be free. Because right now, we are not free. Politics is not our way out. Democracy is not our way out. Christianity is not our way out. But if the Son shall therefore make us free, we are going to be free indeed. Free from captivity. You understand? Diseases. We're going to live forever. We're going to rule the nations on earth. But some of our people don't believe that they are still in captivity this day. Jump up to verse 33. Watch this. Verse 33. They answered him. We be Abraham's seed. Mm -hmm. And we're never in bondage to any man. You see that? He says, we are the seed of Abraham. We've never been to bondage. To, we have never been to bondage to any man. Who were we in bondage to? The Roman Empire. With this, Rome was ruling during this time. But the scribes and Pharisees, they did not believe that they were in captivity. That's many of our people today. The pastors, these Christian pastors, the bourgeoisie Negroes, you understand, the politicians, 
They all think the same way. They all think the same thing. They don't believe that they are in captivity. Your celebrities, your soccer players and all, they don't believe they are slaves. You understand? They don't believe it. Read. How sayest thou, ye shall be, shall be made free? Because in their minds, they were free already. That's what they believe. That's why it says, how sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Why are you saying we're going to be made free? You understand? What were they saying? We are free already. They were already in their kingdom. That's the same thing today. Our people believe they are already in their kingdom right now. You understand? Because one or two uh, black men and black women, they've got a million there. They've got a billion there. They think they are in their kingdom. No, they are not in their kingdom. And they are not free. You understand? They are spiritually bankrupt. Understand that. Go ahead. Jesus answered, answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm -hmm. Whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. Whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. Let's get to what sin is. Get that. First John 3 and 4. Whosoever, he says, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Read that. First book of John, chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Mm -hmm. For sin is the transgression of the law. You see that? Because sin is the transgression of the law. So these scribes and Pharisees, they didn't believe that they were, free, that they, they were slaves. They didn't believe it because they were living large. They were living better than the rest of us. That's the same thing today. You understand? They are living better than the rest of us. So they think that they are free. They are selfish. They only care about themselves. They don't give a damn about their people. That's why they say, what? We are not, they were not slaves. They thought they were free. That's what they believe. You understand? Jump down to verse, jump down to verse 8, 1 John. Stay in the same chapter. 1 John 3, verse 8. Watch this. Verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil. You see that thing? He that committed sin, he that breaks the laws of God, they are of the devil. Who was ruling over them? Who was ruling over us during that time? The Romans. The Romans was over us. So they were of their father, the devil. Because they were, guess what? Rome was feeding them. Rome was taking care of them. Rome gave them positions. So they lived better than the rest of us. That's why they did not believe that they were slaves. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Really? For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. You see that thing? The Son of God was made manifest to Israel. Get that in John 1. The Son of God was made manifested to who? To Israel. John chapter 1. Excuse me. John chapter 1. Uh, read verse, verse 31. Watch this. The book of John chapter 1 verse 31. Mm -hmm. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. You see that? That he should be made manifest to Israel. Come on. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. That's John the Baptist. Go back to where he was at. First John 3. Read verse 8 one more again. First book of John chapter 3 verse 8. Mm -hmm. He that committed sin is of the devil. Read. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Mm. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. That he might destroy the works of the Roman Empire. You understand? In these last days. When he returns. Because America is the extension of ancient Rome. So he's going to destroy the works of the devil. You understand? Now, what we're reading here, our Lord and Savior is telling us. He was telling the scribes and Pharisees, listen. Yes, you Abraham see. But guess what? You're still in captivity. But because they were living better than the rest of us, they did not believe that they were slaves, number one. Number two, they thought they knew the truth, but they did not know the truth. That's why he had to tell them, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Because they were not free. Just because they were living better than the rest of us, it does not mean they were free. You understand? They were given the illusion of freedom. Yeah, watch this. Get that in John. John chapter... Um, John chapter 8, stay in the same chapter, John 8, read verse 47. 
book of John, chapter 8, verse 47. I'm going to show you something. What we read in 1 John 3, verse 8, is the same thing we're going to read now in verse 47. Watch this. It's a follow-up scripture to that. Read it. He that is of God heareth God's words. You see that? He that is of God will hear the word of God, the laws of God. So the scribes and Pharisees, they were not of the Lord. They were of their father, the devil, which is who? Rome. Go ahead. Today it's America. Babylon the Great. Read. Ye therefore hear them not. Because ye are not of God. You see that thing? Because ye are not of God. Jump up to verse 44. Read. Verse 44. Mm -hmm. Ye are of your father, the devil. You see that? Ye are what? Ye are of your father, the devil. Ye are of your father, the devil. Ye are of your father, Rome. That's what he was telling them. You are of your father, the devil, the Roman Empire. Go ahead. And the last of your father you will do. The last of your father you will do. Because why? They did not keep God's commandment. The Roman Empire, white people during the time of day did not keep God's laws. You understand? And our forefathers, they were following the customs and traditions of the Roman Empire. Mixed with the tradition, with the laws of, with the laws of God. But they were more so pushing Roman traditions upon the people. Okay, go ahead. He was a murderer from the beginning mm -hmm. and abode not in the truth mm. because there is no truth in him. Read. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Mm -hmm. For he is a liar and the father of it. He is a liar and the father of it. That's why the scribes and Pharisees also, they were what? There was liars. I'm going to prove that. Get that in Titus chapter 1. Titus. Because the Apostle Paul had to address the same thing. Titus chapter 1, read verse 10. Watch this. The book of Titus chapter 1, verse 10. Read. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. You see that? The unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, those were the scribes and Pharisees who lived better than the rest of us. And they thought they were what? They did not give a damn about the people. Okay, read. Especially they of the circumcision. You see that thing? Especially they of the circumcision, the scribes and Pharisees. Go ahead. Whose, whose mouths must be stopped. Mm -hmm. Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy lucre's sake. Because they only cared about the money and the riches that they had. That came with the, 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 the sacrifices and the carnal ordinances. That's why they were still pushing that. They were not teaching the laws of God. They were pushing, they were pushing what? The carnal ordinances, the diverse washings and all that. That's what they were pushing. They were still pushing the people to sacrifice. Even when Christ came and he was teaching that, listen, now you listen to me now. You understand? That's why they had a problem with the Messiah and his followers, the disciples. Because now what were they doing? The, Christ was reforming the church. They didn't like that thing. Okay, come on. One of themselves even a prophet of their own said, the Christians are always liars, mm -hmm. evil beasts, slow bellies. They were evil beasts and they were slow belly, meaning they were stupid. Go ahead. Watch this. Read. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply mm -hmm. that they may be sound in the faith. You see that thing? It says, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. That's why we don't play with the Christian pastors. We don't play with them. We Jezebel and Ahab that we see on, the, we don't play with none near of them. Why? Because the Lord is saying, rebuke them sharply. You understand? We must do that thing. We must rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith of the Messiah that died for us. That's what the Lord is teaching us. He put the same spirit on the apostle Paul to do the same thing. Okay? Now, let's go back. Go back to John 8 now. John 8.32. So we get a better understanding what Christ was saying here, okay? Because the scribes and Pharisees, they were living large. They were living better than the rest of us. Read. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Mm -hmm. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So Christ is telling, he was telling us, listen, you, when you keep these commandments, you follow after me, 
you are truly going to be free when I return to deliver you from the hands of your enemies. Then you will truly be free. Luke 168. Let's get there. Luke chapter 1, start at 67. Okay. Watch this. Read it. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68, verse 67. 67. Come on. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying... He was what? And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying... And prophesied. So he was filled with the Holy Ghost and he prophesied. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Christ. So he was prophesying. You understand? The spirit of prophecy. Go ahead. Watch what he said when he prophesied. Read. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Blessed be the Lord God of the Israelites. He visited and redeemed his people. Come on. He hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Read. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Come on. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. You see that? That's what he was prophesying about. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. You understand? And guess what? That we, the Israelites, we should be saved from our enemies, plural, and from the hand of all that hate us. This right here, this is the good news. That's why Christ said, you shall be what? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Why? Because we are going to be delivered from the hands of our enemies, from the hand of all that hate us. Go ahead, watch this. Read. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant. You see that thing? To perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to get into the topic. But I just want to paint a picture for you. Watch this. You see this part right here? Read that again, verse 72. Read again. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 72. Uh -huh. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. You see that thing? To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. What you want to understand is this. The, the, old, the, 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 the first covenant that was promised, is had not been fulfilled yet, that first covenant. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. That first covenant has not been fulfilled because that first covenant was not promised to us. It was promised to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Next verse. Watch this. Read. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. You see that? The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Genesis chapter Genesis 17. I'm going to show you some. Pay close attention. We're going to get into the parables of wisdom. You understand? Watch this. Genesis chapter 17. Read verse 1. We're going to be jumping around in this chapter. I want you to pay close attention. Go ahead. The book of Genesis chapter 17 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. He says, walk before me and be thou perfect, meaning keep the commandments. Come on. According to Psalms 19 verse 7. Read. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. Mm. And will multiply thee exceeding. You see what he's saying to our forefather? If that's what we just read in Luke 173. He says, I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Go ahead. And Abraham fell on his face. And God talked with him, saying, Read. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou mm -hmm. shalt be a father of many nations. You see that? He says, my covenant is with you, Abraham, and you're going to be a father of many nations. He's going to tell you who those nations are. Okay, jump down to verse 6. Watch this. The 6. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. You see what he's saying? He says, I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. Read. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee mm -hmm. and I seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. Read. To be a God unto thee 
and to thy seed after thee. Pray. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. That part right there. You see that part right there when it says, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. During the time of King David and King Solomon, we were not, in, we were not there for everlasting possession. We were only there for 80 years. For 80 years, we ruled the earth. We had the kingdom of heaven on earth. 80 years. No, it wasn't everlasting. So the covenant that the Lord is making with our forefathers here is everlasting. You understand? So he made that covenant, that everlasting covenant, not with us, but with our forefather Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand that. The proof of that, watch this. Give me, give me the book of Jeremiah. Give me Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah chapter 31. Watch this thing right here. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 31. Read verse 31. Watch this. Book of Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Read. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. He says, I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So the new covenant is with Judah and Israel, all 12 tribes together. Come on. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Stop right there. Stop right there. Not according to what? Read that again, verse 32. The book of Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 32. Read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. You see that thing? It says, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Because there was a covenant that the Lord made with us when we came out of Egypt. You understand? It's not the covenant that the Lord made with our forefather Abraham, that everlasting covenant. You understand? Read. Which my covenant they break. They did what? Which my covenant they break. We break all the commandments that was given unto us. That was, you read Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68. Yeah, that is a testament against us. Read. Although I was an husband unto them, said the Lord. Now watch this. Give me that and let's get the covenant that he made with us when we came out of the land of Egypt. Get that in Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24. Read verse 7. Watch this. Start of verse 6. You know what? Start of verse 4. Exodus 24 verse 4. We're going to read down. Watch this. The book of Exodus chapter 24 verse 4. Read. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. And rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. You see that thing? It says 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Read on. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. Read. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins. And half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. You see what Moses did? He took half the blood and put it in basin of the sacrifices. And half the blood he sprinkled it on the altar. The blood was sprinkled on the altar. Come on. Read. And he took the book of the covenant. And read in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord hath said we will we do and be obedient. Come on. And Moses took the blood. And sprinkled it on the people and said, mm -hmm. Behold Read. the blood of the covenant. Behold the what? Behold the blood of the covenant. Behold the blood of the covenant. The blood of the covenant, that's the covenant he's talking about. The covenant that he made with us when we came out of Egypt, that's the covenant that we broke. But what we read in Luke 171, 273, that's not the covenant that he's talking about. He's talking about the covenant that he made with our forefather Abraham, an everlasting covenant. Because the one that he made with us here, with Moses, is was not an everlasting covenant. You understand? So that first covenant that we made with Abraham, guess what? It's going to, it was fulfilled when Christ died for us so that we can get back to that first covenant that he made with our forefather Abraham. Read. 
Come on. Behold the blood of the covenant, which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. You see that thing? With the Lord made with you concerning all these words. Concerning all these words. Okay? So that's what the, the, that Christ said to what? Christ said to die for us. So he can reconcile us back to the Father. According to the covenant that he made with our forefather Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So go back to Luke 1. Luke 1, verse 72. Read that again. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 72. Read. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. You see that? And to remember his holy covenant. Come on. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. You see that? The oath, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham. That everlasting covenant right there. Remember, that everlasting covenant was not by blood. It was through faith in the Lord by, and keeping of the commandments. Because that's what our forefather Abraham did. This covenant that of animal sacrifice was added because of what? Get that in Galatians chapter 3 verse 19. Okay. The book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 19. Go ahead. Wherefore then severed the law. The law of animal sacrifice, read. It was added because of transgressions. Mm -hmm. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Do you see that? Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Who was the promise made to? To our forefather Abraham in Luke 173, like we read. Genesis chapter 17, like we read. Till the seed, which is Christ, should come to whom the promise was made. Come on. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. That mediator was Moses, our forefather. Okay, now, let's get into the topic now. Give me the book of Mark chapter 7. Give me Mark chapter 7, verse 17. Mark 7, 17. Let's start there. Mark chapter 7, verse 17. Watch this. The book of Mark chapter 7, verse 17. Go ahead. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. His disciples asked him concerning the parable. What's the parable that is being spoken of here? Jump up to verse 14. Watch this. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, How can unto me every one of you and, under and understand? He says, how can unto me every one of you and understand, and understand. How do we get understanding, brothers? Let's get that. Psalms 111 and 10. He says, how can unto me every one of you and understand. How do, we, how do we get a good understanding of this Bible? Read what you got. Psalms 111 and 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Come on. His praise endureth forever. You see that? A good understanding of all they that do his commandments and his praise will endure for his praise endures forever. You understand? So we must keep God's commandments to understand what the Lord is saying. Go back. Mark 7 verse 14 again. The book of Mark chapter 7 verse 14. Mm -hmm. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, How can unto me, every one of you, and understand? And understand. Because if you keep God's commandments, you can understand what I'm about to say. Go ahead. There is nothing from without a man mm. that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. You see what he's saying? He says, there is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. He says, nothing that comes out of the man, meaning what? From without comes into the man can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. Go ahead. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. He says, if any man have spiritual ears, let him understand. What he's saying. That's what Christ is saying right there. Okay. Now watch this. Give me Psalms 119 verse 18. Psalms 119. I love that verse right there. Psalms 119 verse 18. I believe that's what I want. Let's read that. Psalms. Chapter 119 
Chapter 119, verse 18. Come on. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. That's what we're praying for. We're praying for the most High like God to open our spiritual eyes, that we may see wondrous things out of his laws. You understand? Jump down to 104. Verse 104. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 104. Mm -hmm. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. You see that through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Now, watch this. Go back to Mark chapter 7. We're going to read verse 17 now. Mark chapter 7, verse 17. We're going to deal with this, what Christ is saying here. Yeah? You understand? But I want to take you at that. I'm going to use a different way to explain it to you, too, so it makes sense to you. I'm going to give you the sense this day in the spirit of Christ. Read verse 17. Mark chapter 7, verse 17. The book of Mark chapter 7, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. Go ahead. And he said unto them, I ye so without understanding also. Do you not understand also? Do you not get it? Go ahead. Do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entering into the man, it cannot defile him? You see what he's saying? He says that he says, Do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entering into the man, it cannot defile the man? He says, it's coming outside, it's entering into the man. He says, this cannot defile the man. What is Christ talking about? Let's understand. Jump up to verse 1. The book of Mark chapter 7, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. So now the scribes and Pharisees. Let's see who the scribes and Pharisees are or were. Read that. Give me that in... Um, Matthew 23, verse 1. He said, Then came set together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes. They came from Jerusalem. Get that in Matthew, chapter 23, verse 1. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 1. Read. Right? Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples. Read. Right? Saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So the scribes and Pharisees, they sat in Moses' seat. They were the judges of Israel. They were the elders of Israel during that time. Go ahead. Oh, therefore, whatsoever they bid you, observe. It says, whatever they command you, observe. Okay, read. That observe and do. It says, observe and do it, meaning obey and apply it. Come on. But do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. You see that? He says, but don't do after their works because they say and do not. You understand? So uh, they were hypocrites. They said, but they did not do it. Watch this. Now give me, give me, go back to Matthew. Go back to Mark now. Chapter 7, verse 2 now. The scribes and Pharisees, they sat in Moses' seat. They were the judges. Okay? Read that. Mark 7, verse 2 now. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 2. Read. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defile, that is to say, with unwashed, with unwashing hands, they found fault. So now the scribes and Pharisees it says, when they saw what some of his disciples, some of Christ's disciples, it says what? Read that again, verse 2. The book of Mark chapter 7, verse 2. Read. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defile, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. So when they saw Christ's disciples eating with unwashing hands, they found fault with them. Okay? We're going to understand what this means. Go ahead. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. He says the because he says because the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they, meaning except the disciples of Christ, you understand? He says, wash their hands off, meaning often, eat not. They don't eat and unless they've done that, holding the tradition of the elders. Because you might think, you know, you understand, eating with your hands not washed is good. No, 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 that's not what he's talking about. But it is what the way saying is 
They were saying, listen, you if you eat with unwashing hands, you understand? They found four said that's a sin right there. You understand? Watch this. Hold this. Give me Matthew chapter 15, verse 1. Let's get the same account. Matthew 15, verse 1. Because this whole chapter right here, yes, it goes into the scribes and Pharisees finding fault with the disciples of Christ because they were saying they were eating food with unwashing hands and they found fault with that. So they were focusing on that, but they omitted the weightier matters of the law. I know I'm jumping ahead, but let me take a step back. Matthew 15, verse 1. The book of Matthew chapter 15, verse 1. Because this what we're going over is the Christians are, are confounded by this. That's why they say you can eat whatever the hell you want. You understand? Because it does not defile you. He's not talking about that. Read what you got. Matthew 15 verse 1. The book of Matthew chapter 15 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Read. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Mm -hmm. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. He says, because they don't wash their hands when they eat bread. Why do they transgress the tradition of the elders? Because they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Okay, that's what they are saying. Jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. Start of verse 16. Yet... Start of verse 16. We're going to read down. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 16. Go ahead. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Are ye also yet without understanding? He's going through the same account. Go ahead. Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and mm -hmm. is cast out into the throat? You see what he's saying? He says, Don't you understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth going in, going, go goeth into the belly, meaning what you put in your mouth, it goes into your belly and you crap it out. That's what Christ is saying. Read on. But those things which proceed out of the mouth cometh forth from the heart mm. and they defile the man. You see what he's saying? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from, forth from the heart. They come from your conscience, your mind. Are those are the things that defile the man? Keep going. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, mm -hmm. murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Come on. These are the things which defile a man. These are the things which defile a man. I'm gonna deal with that later on. Go ahead. But the part I want is this right here. Read. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Uh, but to eat with unwashing hands, that does not defile the man. You understand? So he was not saying you can eat whatever you want. You are, the, 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 the moral of the story was to eat with unwashing hands, that does not defile you. He wasn't saying you eat whatever you want, it goes into the belly, it goeth out. No, it, they were talking about eating with unwashing hands. That's what the parable is about. Now, let's begin to go into the details of this thing. Go back to Mark now. Go back to Mark chapter 7. Okay, read verse 2 again. The book of Mark chapter 7, verse 2. Go ahead. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defile, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. Read. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they, Wash their hands oft, eat not holding the tradition of the elders. Eat not holding the tradition of the elders. Jump down to verse 5. Watch this. Read. Verse 5. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? But eat bread with unwashing hands. But eat bread with unwashing hands. He says, Why are they not walking according to the tradition of the elders? That's what they are asking right there. You understand? But Christ already explained it. That's not a sin, what they are doing. You understand? It's not a sin. To eat bread with unwashing hands, that does not defile the man. You understand? It does not defile the man. Christ already explained what defiles the man. That which goeth out of the mouth because it comes from your mind. You understand? That's what Christ was, was explaining right there. Or watch this. 
Jump up to verse 4 now. Mark chapter 7, verse 4. The book of Mark chapter 7, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. Mm -hmm. And many other things they be, which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots, brass and vessels and of tables. Brazen vessels and of tables. Jump down to verse 8. Verse 8. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. So now, guess what? They were putting emphasis. They put more emphasis on this, what we just read. Washing of cups, pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. You understand? Washing of hands. All of these things, they pertain to the outside. I want you to understand what Christ is going over here. These things, they pertain to the outside. Let's understand. Give me Matthew 23, 25. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 25. Go ahead. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Mm. For ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and, and excess. You see what he was explaining, really? What was going on here? They only cared about what it looks on the outside. They did not care about what? They did not deal with the mind. They only dealt with what was what's on the outside, but as pertaining to the conscience, they didn't deal with that. That's what Christ is explaining here. They were not good judges. They were evil judges. Read that again, verse 25. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 25. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, mm. for ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. You see that thing? It says, you clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess because they were extorting the people. You understand? They were greedy upon the people. That's what they was doing. They were focusing on the outside, making themselves look good. Everything was good for them. But guess what? When it comes to the laws of God as pertaining to the conscience, they didn't give a damn about that thing. Jump down to verse 27. Verse 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, mm. which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within, full of dead men's bones, mm. and of all uncleanness. You see that? And of all uncleanness. So they're so busy cleaning on the outside, but on the inside, they were full of what? They were full of dead men's bones. They were full of garbage. They were full of BS. That's what the Lord is telling them. Go ahead, verse 28. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. Mm -hmm. But within, ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. You see that thing? That was their problem. They were too busy focusing on the cleaning of the cups and pots and brazen vessels and of tables. They were focusing on what? On the outside, what it looks, how they appear to men. Jump up to verse 5. Matthew 23 and 5. Watch this. The book of Matthew chapter 23 verse 5. Mm -hmm. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. You see that thing? That's the reason why Christ was getting on them. Because they did these things to be seen of men. They did not care about the people. They only did it to be seen of men. That's why when the disciples of Christ, they were, they were, they were looking for things to point out that was wrong with them. You understand? Because they didn't care about the conscience. They only cared about what? To be seen of men. That's what the, 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 the Christian pastors are doing today. The scribes and Pharisees, that's what they focused on back then. Read that again, verse 5. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 5. Mm -hmm. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. Mm. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. You see that thing is that they, mo they make broad their phylacteries. A phylacteries was a box that they used to put on their, on their forehead. You understand? The box which, with the laws of God inside of it. And they will tie it around their, 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 their head. And then they also had a what? They also had, um, they also would, 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 would tie a, a leather belt on their arm to represent what? The laws of God also. 
make, making it seem like they are really keeping the laws of God, but they were not keeping the laws of God. They did it to be seen of men. They had huge fringes. You understand? They were not wearing like bumps. You understand? They were glorious, but they guess what? They did not keep God's commandments. It looked good on the outside, but on the inside, they were just full of BS. Read that again, verse 5. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 5. Mm -hmm. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. Mm -hmm. They brought their phylacteries and enlarged the borders of their garments. You see that thing right there? That's what we're reading here. Now watch this. Go back now. Go back to uh, Mark 7. Go back to Mark chapter 7. Read verse 5 and 8 together. Again. 4 verse 8. 4 and 8 together. The book of Mark chapter 7 verse 4. Mm -hmm. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things they be, which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. Verse 8. Verse 8. For laying aside the commandment of God. They, it says what? For doing what? For laying aside the commandment of God. For laying aside the commandments of God. For laying aside the commandments of God. They lay, they put aside the God's commandments. They came up with new traditions now. Go ahead. Ye hold the tradition of men. You see that thing? Ye hold the tradition of men. The same thing that is happening today. The Christian pastors, they put out, they do away with the laws of God. They hold fast the tradition of men. Like Christmas, birthday, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day. New Year's Day, Easter, and all that. You understand? They put aside the laws of God and they hold the tradition of men. That's what's going on today. Okay, go ahead. As the washing of pots and cups mm -hmm. and many other such like things you do. You see that thing? Because they did not give a damn about the people. The only thing, the reason why they did what they did was to be seen of men. They, they focused on what? They were saying, no, the disciples... Well, number one, they said the disciples, they were eating food that with unwashing hands. And they said, that's wrong. Christ says, no, 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 no. There's nothing wrong with that. That does not defile them. What's de what they was defiling is what? Is what's come out of the man. And what was coming out of the scribes and Pharisees? He's going uh, to show you and he's going to show you now. Now read Mark 7 verse 6. What was coming out of the scribes and Pharisees? Watch this. Mark chapter 7 verse 6. He answered and said unto them, Well, hath the Sias prophesied of you, hypocrites, mm. as it is written, These people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You see that thing? These people, they honor me with their lips. Lip service, but their heart is far from me. Meaning what? As pertaining to the conscience, guess what? They don't give a damn about that. They don't want to get their minds right. They only care about what it looks on the outside, but they don't want to get, keep, their, keep the laws of God to purge their conscience from dead works. They didn't want to do that. Okay, read. How be it in vain they do worship me. Mm -hmm. Do they teaching worship me? For, Come on. Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Okay, read that again, verse 7. The book of Mark chapter 7, verse 7. How be it in vain do they worship me? Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. You see that thing? How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Let's understand what, what, the, what Christ is quoting here. Give me that in Isaiah 29, verse 10. We're going to start a little bit higher. Isaiah 29, verse 10. Watch this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 10. Read. For the Lord hath put out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, mm -hmm. and hath closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seers hath he covered. You see that the Lord has done what? He's put upon the, the, the rulers the spirit of deep sleep. He's prophesying about the scribes and Pharisees. He put upon them the spirit of deep sleep, and he closed their eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, have he covered. He covered their eyes and their ears. They cannot understand what the Bible is saying. Read on. 
And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, mm -hmm. which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. He saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. Because it is sealed. They cannot understand that. It is sealed. The sealing what what? Is the laws of God. The only way to open the seal is through God's commandments. Get that in Isaiah. Okay. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. Watch this. Book of Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. Read. Right? Find up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. You see that? Seal the law. Seal the law among my disciples. Because the book is sealed. The only way to open it, Christ can, is the only one that can open the seals of this book and to give us understanding. You understand? And to get understanding, we must obey what it says. That's what he's saying right there, according to Psalms 111 and 10. Go back to Isaiah 29 now. Isaiah 29 verse 12. Book of Isaiah, chapter 29 verse 12. Come on. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Saying, read this, I pray thee. And we say, I am not learned. That's the Christian pastor today. Go ahead, watch this. Wherefore the Lord saith, for as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with mm -hmm. their lips, do honor me. Stop right there. I want you to understand what's going on here. It says, for as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips, do honor me. With their lips. Do honor me. Hold this. We coming right back. Go back to Matthew 23 verse 1 again. The book of Matthew chapter 23 verse 1. Go ahead. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples. Read. Saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit, sit in Moses' seat. Mm -hmm. Oh, therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observing do. Stop right there. You see what he's saying? He says, all therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. That observe and do. Come on. But do not ye after their works. Mm -hmm. For they say and do not. You see that? For they say and do not. With their lips do honor me but their heart is removed far from me. That's what he's saying right there. And I'm going to give you some examples of what they were saying also. You understand? Putting aside the commandments of God by their traditions. Go back to where he was at. Isaiah 29. Read verse 13 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 13. Read. Right. Wherefore the Lord say, wherefore the Lord say, for as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, mm -hmm. and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. You see that thing? And their fear towards me, meaning their understanding of God, is taught by the precepts of men. Man-made traditions, philosophies of men. You understand? But watch this now. Give me the book of Matthew 23, verse 13. Matthew 23, Matthew. because Christ was getting on the scribes and Pharisees. Isaiah is doing the same thing in the spirit of Christ. Watch this. Matthew 23, verse 13. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 13. Read. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You see that? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for they say and do not. Read. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Mm. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Now, you meaning, do you neither do you allow the, do you allow them that are entering to go in? Meaning what? Because they were not teaching the people to get how to get salvation, how to get saved, how to be blameless in the sight of the. They was not doing that, so they were not teaching the kingdom of heaven. They were teaching traditions of men. You understand? Go ahead. Woe well, unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses. You see what they were doing? They were devouring widows' houses. Devouring widows' houses. Let's understand. Hold this. Give me the book of Ezekiel. 
Okay, Ezekiel chapter 20, Ezekiel 22, read verse 23. Watch this. The book of Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Read. Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. Because we are, it says, we are, tell Jerusalem that, listen, they are a land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. The cleansing process, the laws of God is how we're going to cleanse the land and ourselves. Go ahead, watch this. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, mm -hmm. like a roaring lion ravening the prey. You see that thing? Like a roaring lion ravening the prey. The prey. That's why it says what? They devour widows' houses. They devour widows' houses, okay? They are destroying our mothers. That's why the, our sisters, our mothers, they're the ones that go over there. Women that have lost their husbands, they go over there. The pastors be eating the inheritance that their husbands have left to their wives. The pastors, they eat that, okay? Rick? They have devoured souls. Mm -hmm. They have taken the treasure and precious things. You see that thing? The treasure and precious things. They're stealing... They are extorting, they, 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 they are extortioners because they are robbing the people blind. The little money they have left, they have to give it to the pastor. Go ahead. Come on. They have made uh, many widows in the midst thereof. You see that? They've made many widows in the midst thereof. Go ahead. Her priests have violated my law. You see that thing? Her priests, her priests, remember. The scribes and Pharisees, they sat in Moses' seat. They were the high priests. So her priests have violated my law. So Ezekiel is prophesying the same thing that we read where? That we read in Isaiah. That Christ is explaining in Matthew 23. Getting on the priests that have violated God's laws, devouring the prey. You understand? They are roaring lion, ravening the prey. That's what they was doing. Read. Right? And have profaned my holy things. Mm -hmm. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. You see what the Lord is saying? He says they have not put a difference between the holy things of the Most High and the profane things of the world. He says neither have they showed a difference between the unclean and the clean. They've hid their eyes from the Sabbath because they don't keep the Sabbath day. They say Christ fulfilled it. And I, the Lord says he's profaned among them. Go ahead. Watch this. Her princes in the midst of are like wolves ravening the prey. You see that thing? They are like wolves ravening the prey. Wolves ravening the prey. Come on. To shed blood mm. and to destroy souls. To get this honest gain. You see that thing? To get dishonest gain. Read on. And the prophets have dubbed them with untempered mortar. With untempered mortar. You understand? Because now remember, their job is to mold the people in the laws of God. They are not. They are molding the people with untempered mortar. Read on. Seeing vanity. Meaning they see lies. They, they, see, they see vanity. Meaning what? Lies. They cannot, they cannot see the truth. Why? Because they are profane. They are abominable. They are defiled. Read. And divining lies unto them. Mm -hmm. Saying, Thus said the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. You see that thing? Thus said the Lord, when the Lord hath not spoken unto them. Watch this. Give me that in Lamentations. Because Jeremiah explained the same thing. Lamentations chapter 2. Lamentations 2, read verse 14. Watch this. The book of Lamentations, chapter 2, verse 14. Come on. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. You see that? Your prophets have seen vain and foolish things for you. Now, the pastors, these pastors are clueless. They're just dumb. You understand? They cannot prophesy. They cannot understand or read the Bible to save their life. So they cannot guide the people. You understand? Read. And they have not discovered thine iniquity. You see that? They don't know why we as a people were at the bottom, right? They don't know. That's why it says they have not discovered their iniquity. Why? 
Romans 7 verse 7, because they don't, they treat the laws of God like this. Romans 7 verse 7, we're coming back here. The book of Romans chapter 7 verse 7. Mm -hmm. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. You see that? Nay. God forbid. Is the law sin? God forbid. But they treat the laws of God like it's a sin. That's why they say the laws of God are done away with. Meaning, that means what they're saying is the Bible is done away with. That's what they're saying. They are saying the Bible is done away with. They are saying Christ is done away with. That's what they are saying. You understand? Is the law sin? God forbid. Meaning, no. The law is not sin. But that's how these Christian pastors treat the laws of God. The scribes and Pharisees they were doing the same thing. Read on. Nay, I have not known sin, but by the law. You see that? He says the only way you can know sin is if the laws of God are taught to you. That's how your sin will be discovered by the law. But the pastors have not discovered that the iniquities of the people. They don't know how to heal the people. They don't know how to guide the people. Why? Because they treat the laws of God like it's a sin. Read. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. You see that? Because lust fall under what? Covetousness. So the only no way you can know if you are covetous, the laws of God had to be read to you that thou shalt not covet. The 10th commandment. Go back. Lamentations 2 verse 14 again. Book of Lamentations chapter 2 verse 14. Read. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. Mm -hmm. And they have not discovered thine iniquity. Read. To turn away thy, cap thy captivity. You see that? To turn us away from captivity. To be delivered from the hands of our enemies. Okay, read. I have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. You see that thing? They've seen for us what? False burdens and causes of banishment. Zechariah saw the same thing. Give me Zechariah chapter 11. I'm going to show you the prophets were all prophesying about the same things. Zechariah chapter 11, read verse 3. For Zechariah chapter 11, verse 3. Mm -hmm. There is a voice of the howling of the shepherds. For mm -hmm. oh, their glory is spoiled. You see that thing? Their glory is spoiled. Their glory is spoiled. You understand? He says, there's a voice of the howling of the shepherds because their glory is spoiled. The glory of Israel is spoiled. Watch this. Read. A voice of the roaring of young lions. Mm -hmm. For the pride of Jordan is spoiled. For the, because the, proud of, the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Why? How is it spoiled? Give me Colossians 2 verse 8. The book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Go ahead. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. You see that thing? Let any man spoil you. Let any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Traditions of men. Go ahead. After the tradition of men. You see that thing? After the tradition of men. The scribes and Pharisees. Read. After the rudiments of the world. Because they were pushing the rudiments of the world of the Roman Empire. Okay, come on. And not after Christ. Because they were not teaching after Christ. Because they hated Christ when he walked the earth. And the disciples that followed after him. You understand? So go back. Zechariah chapter 11 verse 3 again. The book of Zechariah chapter 11 verse 3. Read. There is a voice of the howling of the shepherds. For their glory is spoiled. A voice of the roaring of young lions. For the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Read. Thus said the Lord my God, feed the flock of the slaughter. It says feed the flock of the slaughter because our people are catching hell and the shepherds pity them not. They don't give a damn. They are blind. They are, they are full. They only care about their belly and what's in their pockets. They don't care about the people. Go ahead. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. You see that thing? The people that possess us, the people that are possessing us today, they are killing us. They are destroying. They are lynching us. They are what? They are mistreating us. They are oppressing us under apartheid, colonization, forced migration, so on and so forth. You understand? Go ahead. And they that sell them say, mm -hmm. blessed be the Lord. And for I am rich. Sell them, and they that sell them say, blessed be the Lord. Meaning the people that sold us, 
into captivity, they say, blessed be the Lord. Why? Go ahead. For I am rich. They, are got, they got rich through them selling us during the slave trade. Watch this. Come on. And their own shepherds pity them not. You see that? The, and their own shepherds pity them not. Who's those shepherds? The scribes and Pharisees that sat in Moses' seat. Because Zechariah here is prophesying about the coming of the Messiah. That's what he's prophesying about. And what was going to take place during when he walked the earth and when he was going to be killed. You understand? And their own shepherds pity them not because we are under Rome. Rome is oppressing us. Today we are under America. America is oppressing us. You understand? And our own shepherds pity us not. Because the Christian pastors, they're supposed to be the shepherds, but they are not. You understand? They are not the shepherds. Let's go back to Ezekiel now. I'm showing you different prophets were prophesying about what the scribes and Pharisees will do. So Christ was not speaking anything new. You understand? Read that in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 22. Read verse 29. Now. The book of Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 29. Mm -hmm. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery. You see that thing? They were oppressing us and they were robbing us. Come on. And have vexed the poor and needy. Mm -hmm. They have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. You see that thing? They have oppressed the stranger wrongfully because we are being oppressed by our own people because they were in being empowered by Rome. That's the same thing today. The Christian pastors, they are empowered by America. America empowers them and they push the same garbage to us to oppress us spiritually, mentally, and physically. That's what they're doing. But the prophets are back. We're going to shut this whole thing down in the spirit of the Messiah. Understand that thing. Now let's go back. Let's go back to uh, Matthew. Go back to Matthew 23, because that's where we were. Matthew chapter 23. Read verse 14 again. Go of Matthew chapter 23, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Woe well, unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. You see that thing? For Pete, that's why they've got prayer warriors, Kokiri King. They've got prayer warriors. They've got overnight prayer. You understand? We the ushers. They say they're praying for three hours, 12 hours, all night prayers. That's the tribes and fairies. That's what's going on in that Christian church. That the temple of the great God is Diana, the Christian church. Read. Therefore, ye shall receive the greater damnation. They, they will receive the greater damnation. They're going to what? They're going to burn. Go ahead. Go on to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. Mm -hmm. and, when he, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. You see that thing? Because the proselyte, who was the proselyte? The proselyte were Israelites, you understand, that were being converted back to the laws of Moses. So as they were being converted back to the laws of Moses, what was the scribes and Pharisees doing? They, they, guess what? They were teaching them about Christ. They were teaching them against Christ. They were being converted back to the laws of Moses because why? They were following the traditions of the other nations. You understand? So as they were coming back, they were coming to being converted back to the laws of Moses. Guess what? They were destroying them even also. That's what the scribes and Pharisees was doing. Okay, read that again, verse 15. Of Matthew chapter 23, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Go unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. You see that thing? It says, now the people come to you to, to get healed. They get converted back to the laws of Moses to land and all that, but you make them, the, 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 when they came in, they were fine. Before they came in, they were fine. But once they came in, they were worse than the way, the way, they, the way they were when they, before they first came in. That's what he's telling them. And that's what the Christian church is about. Because the Christian church is turning our people against God. The Christian church is making our people to be atheists. Understand that. Because atheists are non-believers. They don't believe in God. So our people in the Christian church, they don't believe in the God of this Bible. So therefore, guess what they are? They are atheists. That's what they are. And that's the product of Christianity. That's what Christianity pushes. Doctrines of devils. Okay. Now, let's go back. Go back to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 29. 
verse 13 again. You know what? Matthew 23, jump down to verse 23. Let's read verse 23. Then we'll go back to Isaiah. Matthew, chapter 23, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted, <coughs> and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. Mm -hmm. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. You see what he's saying? So he says the way hypocrites, he says, because he says he paid tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and they omitted the weightier matters of the law. So was he saying, don't pay 10% of your mint, your anise, your cumin? No, he wasn't saying that. He was saying, but you must prioritize these things. You understand? You've omitted the weightier matters of the law, meaning focus on the more important laws and the least important laws. He wasn't saying the least one were not important, but they, they did not take higher priorities than what? Than the weightier matters of the law. Like what? Judgment, mercy, and faith. Those things, they come first, okay? And these OG to have done and not leave the other undone. He's saying, he's not saying stop doing the, uh, giving the tithe of the mint, the anise and the cumin. He's saying, but you must prioritize these things. They were not doing that. They were not doing that. You understand? Now watch this. Go back to Isaiah 29. Read the stage again now. Go of Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13. Read. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and mm -hmm. with their lips, do honor me. Right. But have removed their heart far from me. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. You see what he's saying? And he says, they, But have removed their hearts far from me. Meaning, with their minds, they didn't serve the law of God with their minds. They removed their minds far from the most high. The same mind. That must be purged of those dead works. They didn't want that. You understand? It says, and their fear towards me, meaning their understanding of God is taught by the priests of men because they were following Roman customs. You understand? And Rome was taking care of them. Likewise today, Butiri Jakes, Bukreflo Dollar, you understand? Bu Pastor Chris, Bubushiri, Bumboro. Guess what? That's the same thing today. You understand? But watch this. I keep going. Read verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among these people, mm -hmm. even a marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. The wisdom, the, of the, the wisdom of these Christian pastors is going to perish because they have no wisdom at all, right? And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. You see that thing? Because they, our people regard these Christian pastors as wise and prudent men. But they are dumb and they are what? They are blind and dumb dogs. That's what they are. Okay? They cannot teach the people nothing. That's what the Lord is telling us right there. Now watch this. Go back to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Read verse 6 again. Of Mark chapter 7 verse 6. Mm -hmm. He answered and said unto them, What well, hath the science prophesied of you hypocrites? Mm. As it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But their heart is far from me. Why is their heart far from the Lord? Give me that in Hebrews chapter 9. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. But their heart is far from him. Hebrews chapter 9. Read verse, read verse 14. Watch this. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. Mm -hmm. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Come on. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. You see that thing? Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Because what was they doing? All these traditions that they came up with, those were the dead works. Those were the dead works. So guess what? They did not purge their conscience from these dead works. That's why it says they removed their hearts far from me. And their fears towards God is taught by the precepts of men. Men made traditions. You understand? Today is modern day Christianity. Back then, it was what? They were pushing Roman customs on our people. They were coming up with new traditions and all that. Following paganism. You understand? The customs and traditions of pagan Rome. 
You understand? And they continued on even until when we took over Rome under the during the time of the Holy Roman Empire. You understand? Starting from Septimius Severus in 193 AD on up to 325 AD with Constantine. You understand? Who, who merged church and state and call it the Holy Roman Empire and mix the, the teaching of Christ with paganism. You understand? So that, that from that time, after the apostles died, they were pushing there. From 100 AD all the way up to 325 and more than that, beyond that. Because we're still what? We were wicked as hell during the dark ages. We were not keeping God's commandments. You understand? So read that again, verse 14. Book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. Mm -hmm. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God. Read. Purge the conscience from dead works to serve the living God. He says, do you see what he's saying? Purge your conscience, your conscience, your mind from dead works to serve the living God. Because he was telling them, listen, you need to get your mind right because they only care about the outside. You understand the scribes and Pharisees, but their mind was removed far from the most high. That was the problem. You understand? They were hypocrites. You understand? And also not only that, they were blind. The most high God had put upon them the spirit of deep sleep and he covered their eyes. Their eyes was covered. They could not see what this Bible is saying. They were blind. They were blind guides. Get that in Isaiah 56 verse 10. Because Isaiah prophesied about this thing. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 56 verse 10. Go ahead. His watchmen are blind. You see that thing? His watchmen are blind. He's, what is a watchman? A watchman's job, give me that in Ezekiel 3 verse 17. Let's see the job of a watchman. Ezekiel 3 17. You see, the prophets, they all spoke the same thing. Ezekiel spoke about the same thing again. Ezekiel 3 17. Watch this. Book of Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17. Mm -hmm. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Read. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. You see what the job of the watchman is? The job of the watchman is to teach the people the word of God to be give the people warning from what? From the judgment that is to come from the most High God. Read. Come on. The book of Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Mm -hmm. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, mm -hmm. thou speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way. Ray? No speakers to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life. To do the what? same wicked man, to save his life. Because the job of the watchman is to warn the wicked to save his life from the judgment that is to come. Go ahead. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. He's going to die in his sin. That's the same thing we read in John chapter 8. The same thing we read in John chapter 8 verse 34. Go ahead. But his blood will I require at thine hand. You see that thing? But his blood, if he's not warned to save his life, he, when he's put to death, his blood will be required at the watchman's hand. Read. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, mm -hmm. he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. But the watchman now has delivered his soul. The job of the watchman is to warn the people. That is the job. Go ahead. Verse 20. Come on. Again. When a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, mm. and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Mm. That's some heavy stuff right there. That's some heavy stuff. That's going into something else, but okay, all praise to the Lord. Now, go back to Isaiah 56, read verse 10 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 10. Come on. His watchmen are blind. His watchmen are what? His watchmen are blind. His watchmen are blind. Give me Matthew 23 now. Watch this. Matthew 23 verse 16. His watchmen are blind. 
the book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Woe unto you, ye blind guides. Stop right there. Read that again. What? Woe unto what? Woe unto you, ye blind guides. Jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. Ye fools and blind. Ye what? Ye fools and blind. Ye fools and blind. Jump down to verse 24. Verse 24. Ye blind guides. Ye blind guides. Verse 26 now. Verse 26. Thou blind Pharisee. You see that thing? Thou what? Thou blind Pharisee. Thou blind Pharisees. Thou blind Pharisees. Come on. Watch this. Cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter. You see that thing? Now he's getting, he's getting hot now. Here he's going to really explain what he's really saying in the parable. Read that again. The book of Matthew chapter 23 verse 26. Come on. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse mm. first that which is within the cup and platter. You see that thing? It says cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter. What is he talking about? The mind, the mind, the conscience. I'm going to deal with this later on. Keep going, though. That the outside of them may be clean also. You see that thing? That the outside of them may be clean also. So he was giving them the order of cleansing, the order of repentance. You see that thing right there? Hmm. We coming back here. Go back to Isaiah 56. Read verse 10 one more again. One more again. Book of Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 10. Mm hmm his watchmen are blind. Right? They are all ignorant. They are all what? They are all ignorant. They are all ignorant. Give me that in Romans chapter 10 verse 3. His watchmen are blind. That's what we read in Matthew 23, 16, 17, 24, and 26. Now read that. Matthew, Romans 10 verse 3. Watch this. Book of Romans chapter 10 verse 3. Mm -hmm. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness... They being what? They being what? Because that's the key right there. Read that part again. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You see what the ignorance is? They are ignoring God's righteousness. Get that in Luke 1. Luke chapter 1 verse 6. They are therefore they being ignorant the scribes and Pharisees were ignorant of God's righteousness. What is that? Read that in Luke 1. Book of Luke chapter 1 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. You see what it means to be righteous? Is to walk in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. The scribes and Pharisees, they were ignorant of God's righteous meaning what? They were not walking in all the commandments of the Lord. Go back. Romans 10 verse 3 again. With Romans chapter 10 verse 3. Mm -hmm. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. And going about to establish their own righteousness. You see that thing? They went about to establish their own. Their own righteousness. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. That turn from the truth. Read. Right? have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You see that they did not submit themselves to the righteousness of God. Go back now. Isaiah 56. Read verse 10 again. Book of Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 10. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. Mm. They are Come on. all dumb dogs. They are they all dumb bark. dogs. Because, because a dog is supposed to bark. But the scribes and Pharisees, the Christian pastors today, your Pastor Chris, your Creflo Dollar, your Tiri Jakes, your Bushiri, your Mboro, Bumukuba, they are all dumb dogs. That's what the Bible is saying. They are dumb dogs. They cannot what? They cannot bark. Because a dog's supposed to bark. It's supposed to warn the people of the danger that's coming. But the Christian pastors are not doing that. They are not warning the people of the impending doom, doomsday, World War III, the war of Armageddon, nations going to war, nuclear war. They are not warning the people of none of that. They are just quiet, eating what? Eating pork, shrimp, lobster, celebrating Christmas, New Year, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Women's Day. You see that, Ray? Sleeping, lying down. 
mm. loving to slumber. They are sleeping on the job. They are not supposed to be sleeping on the job. They're supposed to be bothered. You understand? They're supposed to be moved by the conditions of the people, but they are not because why? They are comfortable in their oppression. Ray. Yeah, they are greedy dogs mm. which can never have enough. You see that? They are greedy dogs which can never have enough because these pastors today, they are millionaires. They are, some of them, they are multimillionaires. Guess what? They are, they are greedy dogs. They can never have enough. They are exploiting the people. They are living in mansions, driving Bentleys and all that, fancy BMWs that cost over a million and all that, while the people are struggling and starving, living in cuckoos. They cannot, they can barely buy bread. But when they are living large, that's what the scribes and Pharisees, they were living large back then, while the rest of Israel was catching hell, being impoverished. So it is today. Great. And they are shepherds that cannot understand they are shepherds. They cannot understand what this Bible is saying because the Lord has poured upon them what? The spirit of deep sleep. Read. They all look to their own way. Mm. Everyone for his gain from his quarter. You see that thing? Everyone for his gain from his quarter. Meaning they're only doing this is for financial gain. Everybody just wants to have money. Guess what? They want, they're opening a church now. You understand? The same thing, what, 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 what is the other sect? Politics, which is two sides of the same demonic coin. Christianity and politics is the same thing. You understand? It's a demon with two faces, but it's the same thing. That's why people are becoming tenderpreneurs. What's the difference? The same thing, because they are all moving in the same spirit. Okay? Now, go back, go back to Mark now. Okay? Go back to Mark. Chapter 7, Mark 7, read verse 6 again. Book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 6. Mm -hmm. He answered and said unto them, Well, if the Messiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, these people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Read. How be it? In vain do they worship you, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. You see that thing? How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus chapter 20. Exodus 20, read verse 7. How be it in Exodus. vain, in vain, in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Watch this. Exodus 20, verse 7. Watch this. Book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. You see that? Thou shalt not take the Lord thy God in vain. This is the third commandment. Go ahead. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Let's see what it means to take the, Lord, the name of the Lord our God in vain. Give me that in Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 7. Proverbs 30 verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 30 verse 7. Go ahead. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. He says two things I require of you Lord. Deny me them not before I die. Come on. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Mm-hmm. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Come on. Feed me with food convenient for me. You see what he's saying? He says, remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Give us this day our daily bread. That's what he's saying right there. Go ahead. Lest I be fool and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Stop right there. So you see, the scribes and the Pharisees, they were full and they denied Christ. Because who made them full? The scribes and Pharisees, they were, taken, they were taken care of by who? By Rome. Rome was taking care of them. That's why as their own shepherds pity them not, like we read in Zechariah chapter 11. You understand? The scribes and Pharisees, they denied, they were full and they denied the Lord and denied the teachings of the Lord too. Read. Or lest I be poor and steal. Lest I be what? 
or lest I be poor and steal. So those of the those of the scribes and Pharisees that was poor, they were stealing. What were they? They were stealing from the people. That's the same thing today. The Christian pastors, they are broke. They don't want to get a job. Guess what they do? They say, I'm going to be a pastor now. They're going to open a church. And guess what? Somehow the church gets open and the people all of a sudden, they just go there. Satan, the white gate. You understand? And they steal from the congregation. Read. And take the name of my God in vain. You see that thing? And take the name of my God in vain. That's what they're doing. Go back to Mark chapter 7. Read verse 7 again. Of Mark chapter 7, verse 7. Mm -hmm. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. They were teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Let me show you that. Give me that in First Timothy 4, verse 1. They were teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Watch this. First Timothy 4, verse 1. First book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's what, that's what, Mark, that's what we're reading in Mark. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. That's what we're reading here. It says, in the latter days, in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. The true faith of this Bible. They were going to give heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. That's, that's what the scribes and Pharisees was teaching. Doctrines of devils. You understand? Read. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Doing what? Speaking lies in hypocrisy. That's letting you know. It's talking about the scribes and Pharisees here. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Because they were being rebuked in Matthew 23 for being hypocrites. They only cared about the outside, but they did not clean the inside. Read. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You see that thing? Having their minds defiled. Their mind was seared with a hot iron. You understand? Doctrines of devils. Read. Forbidding to marry. Mm -hmm. And commanding to abstain from meats which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So this is going into this forbidding to marry. Now this is going into what is going into the Roman Catholic Church because they forbid to marry. You understand? They command, to, uh, they command you to abstain from meat. They say on Friday, you can only eat fish. Don't eat meat as if fish is not meat. But that's what they say. This goes into the Roman Catholic Church, which is the mother of all Christian denominations today. You understand? The mother of all Christian denominations today. Modern day Christianity comes from what? The Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church, everything that they know, to the, the, the Roman Catholic Church knows, they got it from where? They got it from the Byzantine Empire. When we ruled during the Dark Ages with Constantine, that black devil, okay? Now, I'm going to show you something. Let's go back now. Go back to go back to Mark 7. Mark 7 verse 7. The book of Mark chapter 7 verse 7. Read. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Read verse 8 now. For laying aside the commandment of God, Ye hold the tradition of men mm -hmm. as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. You see that thing? It says there were what? the hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. Go back to Matthew 23. We're coming back here. Matthew 23. Matthew 23. Read verse 25 now. Let's deal with that. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 25. Read. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. You see that thing? But within, it says, ye clean, ye make the outside of the cup of the platter, you understand? But within, they are full of extortion and what? And excess. Next verse. Read. Thou blind Pharisee, 
Cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. You see that thing? That the outside of them may be clean also. Thou is telling them, he said, listen, you're focusing on the outside, you understand, but within, you are full of extortion and excess. Cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter. Let's deal with verse 25. When it says, for he make clean the outside of the cup. Give me that in Jeremiah 22. No, Jeremiah 2. Jeremiah 2, verse 22. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 22. Go ahead. For though thou wash thee with neatly, mm -hmm. and take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord God. You see what the Lord was telling us? Is a listen. Although you wash yourself with neatly, neatly is, is soap, a cleansing solution. It says, take thee and you take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord. So what was the Lord telling us? He was telling us, listen, so that's also letting you know, in Mark 7, there's nothing wrong with washing your hands before you eat. So the parable is, they were focusing on the outside, but the inside was what? Was full of garbage. Guess what they were? They were beautiful monsters. You see that class that we had? Ask your neighbor. You understand? They were beautiful monsters. They were looking good on the outside, but in or inside, they were ugly. You understand? So the same thing, you see, you see how today our sisters, they just focus on what it looks like on the outside, but inside, you understand? She's a demon. Yes. And you'll tell the sister, say, listen, sis, I know it's not the class of the sister, but just bear with me. You'll tell the sister, listen, sis, you are a beautiful monster. She's not going to focus on the monster part. She will focus on the beautiful part and re disregard the monster part. He says, yeah, they say I'm a monster, but at least I'm beautiful. That's the mindset of our sisters, by the way. You understand? So that's the scribes and Pharisees today. That's how they think. That's why our sisters, many of them in the Christian church, that's how they think also. Read that again, verse 22. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 22. Mm -hmm. For though thou wast thee with nitri, and take thee much soap, yet then iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord God. But he says, your sin still remains. Yes, you wash yourself, you wash yourself with all this, but you what? Guess what? So the cups and the and the, the cups um, that we're reading about in Mark, the cups and pots and brazen vessels and tables and all that is making reference to their what? Their bodies. Their bodies. They were focusing on that. They are outside, but the inside, their spirits were still defiled. That's what Christ was explaining. You understand? Read that again, verse 22. Then we're going to go somewhere else to give you more sense on this. Read it. The book of Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 22. Mm -hmm. For though thou wast thee with Nietzsche, and take thee much soap, Read. yet then iniquity is marked before me, Say the Lord God. He says, although you're washing with yourself, you understand, with soap and all that, he says, but your iniquity is still mad, meaning you are still in the midst of sin because your conscience is still defiled. That's what he was telling them. Now give me Isaiah chapter 1, verse 16. Watch this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 16. Read. Wash you, make you clean. You see that? Cool. Wash you, wash you. Wash you, make you clean. Wash you, make you clean. Come on. Put away the evil of your doings from before mm. mine eyes. Go ahead. Cease to do evil. You see what he's telling them? Is this what the Lord is telling us? Is wash you and make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings. Because the evil of your doings takes place where? In your mind. You understand? It's not what it looks on the outside. You first deal with what's on the inside, the evil of your doing. Then you are going to be cleansed from inside out. That's what the Lord is saying. It says, cease to do evil, meaning repent. Get your mind right. You understand? Give me that in 1 Peter 3.21. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 21. Go ahead. The light figure were unto even baptism that also now save us. Mm -hmm. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. You see that thing? So baptism does save us. Not putting away the filth of the flesh, because how do you do that? To put away the filth of your flesh, you wash. 
You can be baptized with water, meaning you wash with water and all that, like we read in Isaiah 116. You wash away with, you wash your filth from your body, right? Read. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. You see that thing? But the key is baptism save you with what? Because it's the answer of a good conscience towards God. So the washing yourself on your body is not going to clean your conscience. But cleansing your, but your mind, that's where you that's where, that's when you are going to be cleansed. Truly. When your conscience is being dealt with the, the laws of God. You are applying the laws of God to your conscience. Get that in Romans 7.25. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 25. Mm -hmm. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, mm -hmm. but with the flesh, the law of sin. You see that thing? With the flesh, you serve sin, but with the mind, you serve the law of God. You cleanse from within, inside out. That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in John 15, verse 3. Before, before we get there, because I'm jumping ahead, but it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, get that. Go back to Matthew 23. Matthew 23. Read verse, 20, read verse 26 now. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter that the outside of them may be clean also. That the outside of them may be clean also. So how do we cleanse first that which, which, which is within the cup and the platter? Get that in um, Psalms 119 verse 9. It says, cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter. The cup and the platter make in reference to what? Our bodies. Read it. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Mm. By taking heed the two according to thy word. You see that thing? That's how we cleanse our ways. Put away the evil of your doing. Why should you make it clean? Put away the evil of your doing. That's the same thing that King David is saying here. Okay, give me that in John 15 verse 3 now. Oh, John chapter 15 verse 3. Come on. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You see that thing? Ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Ephesians 5, 26. This is what's going to cleanse us now. Our spirit, our mind, our conscience. Okay? Read it. Ephesians 5, verse 26. Book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 26. Come on. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You see that thing? That he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Now let's go back. Go back to Mark now, chapter 7. Mark 7, verse 7 again. No, no, Mark 7, verse 8. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 8. Come on. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. Because what they were supposed to do was, was we're supposed to cleanse that which is within the cup and the platter. You understand? That the outside also may be clean. But they were doing it vice versa. Okay, go ahead. Verse 9. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. You see that thing? He says, Full well you rejecting the commandments of God, that ye may keep your own tradition man-made doctrines that's what that's what the scribes and pharisees they did it back then today the scribes and pharisees they are doing the same thing today go ahead for moses said honor thy father and thy mother mm -hmm. and whoso curses father or mother let him die the death because here what we're reading is what the fifth commandment is as because moses said honor thy father and thy mother and whoso curses father and mother, let him die the death. Because guess what? This law was still in effect. Watch this. Get that in Exodus 20, verse 12. Let's read that first. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Honor thy father and thy mother. 
that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Because that's what the law says, which that law describes in Pharisees was not teaching it. And he's going to explain it. Get Exodus 21 now, verse 17. He says, honor your father and your mother. He that kills his father and mother, let him die at the death. Watch this. Exodus 21, verse 17. The book of Exodus, chapter 21, verse 17. Mm -hmm. He that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. You see that? That's what Moses is saying. Go back to Mark 7 now. Read verse 10 again. Watch this. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 10. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curses father or mother, let him die the death. You see that thing? But watch, what, what are the scribes and Pharisees saying? Because remember, it says, ye full well, he says, full well ye reject the commandments of God that ye may keep your own tradition. Let's get some examples of that. Read on. Watch this. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, that is to say, a gift. It is a but gift. It is a gift. He says, say, if a man, but you say, if a man shall say to his mother or his father, it is Corban, meaning that is to say it's a, it's a, a gift, meaning it is a gift, read. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he mm -hmm. shall be free. You see what they were saying? They were teaching the children to disrespect their parents and for the children to, to, to what? Like the brother that said what camp is says children are ungrateful. Uh, says parents sometimes are ungrateful. You cannot make this up. There was a brother at camp who said, parents are ungrateful. You cannot make this up. And he's still a young man. He's still living with his mother. But he's saying, parents are ungrateful. Where are they getting this garbage from? They are getting it from the Christian church, of course. You understand? It says, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. He shall be free. Meaning what? A child, that's why today um, I was watching... What is this show? Suits. Yeah, there was a, this show Suits. These two lawyers, now they, this young man wants to be emancipated from his father. So what they are doing is they are trying to look for things in the father because the father is disciplining the, his son. He's chastising him when he's going, going out of line to teach him direction. But now what they are doing is what? They want to emancipate their child from his father. They are trying to look for, they say, listen, you are abusing your child. You are doing this to your child. And he also, because he does not honor his father, he, guess what? He also is fighting with the lawyers. And he eventually got emancipated from his father. Where are they getting this garbage from? The Christian church. But if you watch that, they show, but you're not using spiritual eyes. You think they are doing what they are doing is right. No, it's wrong what they are doing. It's wrong what they are doing. Okay? That's what we're reading here. Hmm. Go ahead, verse 12. Watch this. The book of Mark chapter 7, verse 12. Mm. And you suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother. And you allow him no more to honor his father or his mother, his father and mother no more. You're giving him the freedom to disrespect his father and mother. That's what the scribes and Pharisees are doing. That's why today the children, they disrespect their parents, especially in the Christian church. Because why? I'm going to show you why the, the how is that possible. I'm going to show you that. Give me the book. Give me the book of Galatians chapter 1. I'm going to show you what's going on. Watch this. Galatians chapter 1. Read verse 6. Book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. Go ahead. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. You see that thing? He says, I marvel that you have been removed from the what? From him that called you into the grace of Christ to another gospel. Why do you say another gospel? The gospel, the, the, the false teachings of Caesar Borgé. Right? Which is not another. It's not another because they are coming with the Bible. But how are they, the way they teach the Bible, that's where the problem is. Right? But there be some that trouble you. Mm. and would pervert the gospel of Christ. That's the Christian pastors. The scribes and the Pharisees, that's what they were doing. They were, they were troubling the apostles and the disciples that followed Christ because they were perverting the gospel of Christ. 
How are they perverting the gospel of Christ? We just read it, but I'm going to show you something. Get that in Ephesians chapter 6. Okay, I'm going to show it to you. Ephesians 6, read verse 1. Watch this. The book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Come on. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. He says, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. The parents in the Lord is talking about the leadership. Your mothers and fathers in this truth. That's the parents in the Lord. Read. He's not saying don't obey your parents in the world because you're supposed to be an example to them. Read. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. With the first commandment with promise. Read. Watch this. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Meaning the kingdom of heaven on earth. Next verse. Watch this. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. You see that part right there? And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. You see that they use that scripture right there. Because back in the day, when I was still in my simplicity, I, I went to the Jehovah. I used to go to the Jehovah's wickedness. And they, they, they brought this scripture out. And they read it. They said, yeah, they read it. It says, provoke not your children to read. They were, the way they broke it down, they were saying, listen, uh, fathers, you know, you must not be, you must not always be on the, on, on sitting on your children's case, correcting them all the time, making them angry, making them mad. That's how they broke it down. That's how they broke it down. And guess what? It was broken, like my daughter used to say. It was broken, yeah. They were not really doing, they were not breaking it down the right way. They were perverting the gospel. Read that again, verse 4. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 4. Go ahead. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, mm -hmm. but bring them up in the nurture and, uh, and, uh, and admonition of the Lord. It says what? It says bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, meaning correct them. When it says provoke not your children to wrath, it's talking about the rest of the Mosai upon them if they are not corrected. If the children are don't get corrected, guess what? They're going to have to meet their maker. That's why it says, he that cares his father and mother, let him die at the death. Yeah, that's what he's explaining here. Don't provoke your children to wrath. I'll give an example of that. Give me that in Sirach. Give me Ecclesiasticus, okay? Sirach chapter, Sirach chapter 22, verse 4. Watch this. No, verse 5, verse no, 5, verse 5. Verse 5. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 22, verse 5. Mm -hmm. She that is bold dishonoreth both the father and her husband. Right? But they both shall despise her. You see that thing? She that is bold. Bold towards what? She's bold towards the commandments of the Most High. Meaning what? She's prideful. Her mind is, her mind is hard-headed towards, towards the laws of God. He says, she that is bold they, she dishonored both her father and her husband. Because if you dishonor your father, is not if, is not maybe, you are going to dishonor your husband. Don't get it twisted. You see, sisters don't get it. Sisters don't understand that you disrespect your father, you are guaranteed 100% fact you are going to disrespect your husband. It's not if, it's not maybe, it's a fact. You understand? That's what we're reading here. She that is bold dishonoreth both her father and her husband, but they both shall despise it. Meaning your father and your husband, they're going to hate your guts. Because you bold towards the commandment. You what? Because why? Your father did not spit in your face. And when he did, your mother was running her mouth. You understand? Intervening. Running her mouth. Playing good cop. Now you are spoiled. You will disrespect your husband as well. That's what the Bible is saying right there. Understand that? Okay. Now, that's just an example. Let's go back. Mark 7. Mark chapter 7. Um, read verse 13 now. The book of Mark chapter 7 verse 13. Go ahead. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition. You see that? They were making the word of God to not, through none effect because of their traditions, right? Which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. 
You see that thing is this, which he have delivered because they delivered a perverted gospel to the people. That's why now the husband, the, the father and mother, they don't understand the scriptures. They are lost and confused. They cannot order their houses. They cannot order the household. They cannot guide the children. They cannot raise the children in the laws of God. You understand? Marriages are broken up because why? These Christian pastors, they are destroying marriages. You understand? So that's what we're reading here, which he have delivered and many such like things do ye. Go ahead. Now, keep going. Verse 14 now. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, How can unto me, every one of you, and understand? Because that's where we were in the beginning of the parable. Go ahead. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. Read. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. So the things that come out of the man, those are the things that defile the man. Hold this. Go to Matthew now, chapter 15. Watch this. Because in Matthew 15, there's, there's the way he's explaining it, which makes it, which is a lot more clearer. Watch this. Matthew chapter 15. Read verse 16 again now, like we read it earlier. The book of Matthew chapter 15, verse 16. And Jesus said, are ye also yet without understanding? You know what? Start at verse 10. Verse 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Hear and understand. Come on. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man. Are that which goes into the mouth defileth the man. That which went into the mouth was talking about what? Eating food with unwashing hands. He says, that's not going to defile the man, right? But that would come at, which, which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Are but that which cometh out of the mouth, out of the mouth, this defileth the man. What is he saying? Hold this. Matthew 12. Matthew 12 verse 36. Watch this. The book of Matthew chapter 12 verse 36. You know what? Let's start at verse 34. Let's start there. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 34. Go ahead. O generation of vipers, mm. how can ye, being evil, speak being what? good things? Being evil. Being evil. Being evil. Being evil. O generation of vipers, because back then, when you insulted somebody using like this, this was a huge insult. Viper. Yeah, and it's comparing somebody to a beast. That was very insulting. Okay, he says, oh, generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, that's the stipulation, they are evil, come on. Speak good things. Speak, 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 speak good things. How can you, being evil, speak good things? That which come out of the mouth, this defiled the man. Go ahead. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You see that thing? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Remember, the context here is what? Being evil. How can they, being evil, speak good things? So what is, the, what is in the abundance of their hearts? Is nothing but evil. You understand? In the abundance of their heart is nothing but evil. And guess what? The heart speaketh. Keep going. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. Mm -hmm. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. You see that thing? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Being evil, they cannot speak good things. Meaning what? An evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. They're going to bring forth evil things. Okay? Go ahead. Watch this. But I say unto you that every idle word, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. You understand? Read on. Go ahead. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, mm. and by thy words shall be condemned. You shall be condemned. Go back now. Matthew 15. Read verse 11 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 11. Read. 
not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, mm -hmm. but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Remember, because out of the abundance of the mouth, the mouth, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So what is he saying right there? It says what? But that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Because what's coming out of the mouth is coming from out of the mind. The abundance of the mouth, of the mind, being evil. You understand? Now let's jump down to verse 16 now. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Go ahead. Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought? Meaning you crap it out. Watch this, read. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. Read that again. And what? They defile the man. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. Mm. And they defile the man. You see that? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. He is making it plain now. Go back to Mark 7, verse 15 now. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 15. Go ahead. There is nothing from without a man that entering, in, in, that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. So the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile him. Because the things that come out of him is the thing that come out of the mouth which come from the heart. And they defile the man. You understand that? Watch this. We coming back here. Give me Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah's, okay. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. Watch this. Book of Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. Read. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You see what he's saying? The heart is, the, 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 of, of all the things that are deceitful, is that the mind is deceitful above all things and is desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Lord knows it. And he's is going to give you a breakdown of how evil and wicked the mind is. Now, go back to Mark 7. Mark chapter 7. Jump down to verse 19 now. Watch this. Mark 7 verse 18. Watch this. The book of Mark chapter 7 verse 18. Come on. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Mm. Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entering, entereth into the man, it cannot defile him? It cannot defile him. Meaning what? Eating with unwashing hands is not going to defile you, but it's going to tell you what's going to defile the man. What defiles the man? Read. Because it entereth not into his heart. Stop right there. Because it entereth not into his what? Because it entereth not into his heart. But it, because it entereth not into his heart. I'm going to show you something. Hold this. Give me that in Leviticus 11. I'm going to show you something with this. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 7. Because this is the famous one that our people don't want to repent from. I'm going to show you something. Leviticus chapter 11. Start at verse 1. Read Leviticus 11 verse 1 and 2. You know what? Let's just get to the point. Leviticus 11 verse 40. Leviticus 11 verse 44. Let's start there. The book of Leviticus chapter 11 verse 44. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves and ye shall be holy. For mm -hmm. I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. The Lord is saying, don't defile yourself with any manner of creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. Come on. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Read. This is the law of the beasts and of the fowl and of every living creature that, that moveth in the waters 
and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. So now he now is going to give us the law of the beasts. You understand? The beasts that the fowls of the air, the creeping things, and the four-footed beasts, so on and so forth. Come on. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean. Mm -hmm. And between the beasts that may be eaten and the beasts that may not be eaten. You see that? That means there's beasts that can be eaten and there's beasts that cannot be eaten. Okay? Now, verse 7. Jump down to verse 7 now. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 7. Go ahead. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. So now, let's say, because our people, they eat pork, right? And many of them don't know that they're not supposed to eat it, but they eat it anyway. Now, because they're eating it, but they are not conscious of it. They are, they, are, they are not conscious that actually they're not supposed to eat this according to the law. Or shrimp, or lobster, or calamari, you know, whatever garbage, cockroaches of the sea that they eat. But now, when we read the law, get that in Romans 7 verse 7. I'm going to show you something. Romans 7 verse 7. Read it. The book of Romans chapter 7 verse 7. Come on. For what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Mm -hmm. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. Come on. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. You see what he's saying? So now he says, I had not known sin, but by the law. So now when the laws of God, the law that says, don't eat pork. And when you eat it anyway, then what happens then? Then it enters into your mind. Now you're con now you're sub in your conscience. Now you're aware now. You know what's going on. You know that you're not supposed to eat it. Now it has entered into your mind now. So that means that when you go and eat it anyway, knowing what the Bible says, now that's when Satan enters in. Because now you know better, you don't do better. You see how that works? Because now it is dealing with your conscience now. Mark 7, read verse 19 again. The book of Mark 7, verse 19. Because it entereth not into the heart, into his heart, but into the belly, and uh -huh. goeth out into the throat, into the throat, purging all meats. You see what he's saying? He says, because it entereth not into his heart, but into his belly. Because it did not enter into his mind. He didn't know that guess what? This thing that he's eating, he's not supposed to eat. But when he's taught the law that he's not supposed to eat, but he goes back and eats it anyway, now it has entered into his mind now. Now Satan has entered now. Now you are aware, but you do it anyway. You the devil, the Bible speaks of. That's what the Lord is explaining it. Okay? Read verse 20 now. Watch this. And he said that which you know what? Out. Let, let, let me get some more on that. Let me get some more on that. Get that in Hebrews. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hebrews 9 and 9. Watch this. That's it right there. Let me write that down. Come on. Hebrews 9 and 9. Chapter 9 verse 9. Which Come was on. a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices mm -hmm. that could not make him that that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. That part right there. He says, that could not make him that did the service perfect. Who did the service? The high priest. He did not make him perfect as pertaining to the conscience. When it came to the conscience, he did not make us perfect. We still were. He, we, uh, he did not purge us from dead. He did not purge our conscience from dead works, meaning the law of animal sacrifice did not purge our conscience from dead works. So that's what we're reading here. As pertaining to the conscience, it did not purge our conscience from dead works. It took Christ, verse 14. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spots to God, 
Mm -hmm. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. You see that thing? Purge your conscience from dead works for, to what? To serve the living God. That's what we're reading right there. Go back to Mark now. Mark chapter 7, read verse 20 now. Now the Lord is going to explain to us what defiles the man. When it enters into your mind and you do it anyway, your mind will be defiled because now you're not applying the laws of God now because now it pertains to your conscience. You know it now. But you do the opposite. Your mind will be defiled because why? It's because of what's in the mind. Okay? What defiling you is what's in your conscience, what's in your mind that is not being purged with the laws of God. Read that now. Mark 7 verse 20. The book of Mark chapter 7 verse 20. Read. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. You see that thing? That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. So when you eat with unwashing hands, that doesn't defile you. But what's coming out of your mind, that's what defiles you. Because it's in your mind. The Lord is going to tell us what's in our mind, which is what defiles the man. Read. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. You see that thing? He's letting you know what's coming out of that. What, 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 that which defiles the man is what's coming from the mind of a man. The mind of men and women. It says what? From, from within, out of the heart of men, proceed what? Proceed evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. Evil thoughts as pertaining to your conscience. It's going to tell you what's in the mind. Read. Adulteries. Mm -hmm. Fornication. Read. Murders. Go ahead. Thefts. Covetousness. Wickedness. Deceit. Lasciviousness. An evil eye. Blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Ray? All these evil things come from within and defile the man. They come from within the mind. They come from within the heart of men, the mind of men. It says all these evil things come from within the heart of men in verse 21, and they defile the man. That's what defiles you. Not eating with unwashing hands. But is he saying don't wash your hands before you eat? He's not saying that because he was explaining that the scribes and the Pharisees were only just focusing on the outside, but they were not cleansing that which is within. That's what Christ was explaining here with the parable. And they got offended at that. Hold that. Go back to Matthew 15. <clears throat> Excuse me. Matthew chapter 15. Read verse 18 again. The book of Matthew chapter 15 verse 18. Read. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, mm -hmm. and they defile the man. You see what he's saying? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. Because the things that come out of your mouth is what's in your mind. That's what we read in Matthew 12. Read. For out come of on. the heart proceed evil thoughts, mm -hmm. murders, adulteries. Fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Go ahead. These are the things which defile a man. Uh -huh. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. That's the answer. But to eat with unwashing hands, that defile not a man. But guess what? The things that come out of your mouth, which comes from your heart, your conscience, that's what defiles you. And what's in your mind? Evil thoughts, murderers, adulteries, fornication, thefts, fault witness, blasphemies. Those are the things which come from within your mind and they defile you. But if you don't want to be defiled by those things that are in your mind, here's the solution. Give me that in First Peter 2 verse 1. First book of Peter chapter 2 verse 1. Go ahead. Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile. Mm -hmm. and hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speakings. The law says we must lay these things aside. Malice, guile, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. Go ahead. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the world, that ye may grow thereby. 
That's the key. The key to your the key to your growth in this truth, you have to repent from these malice, guile, hypocrisy, which is what we're going over in Matthew 23. Envy. You must get rid of your envy spirit. You must get rid of your evil speech. Malice, bitterness, malicious intent, and bitterness. The law says we must get rid of that if you want to grow in this truth. Because for you to grow spiritually, you have to purge yourself from these. You have to get rid of them. If you don't want to be a spiritual midget, guess what? You will get rid of these things. Watch this. Give me that in Sarah chapter 36. Sarah chapter 36 verse 18. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 36 verse 18. Mm -hmm. The belly devours all meats. Yet is one meat better than another. You see what he's saying? The belly devoureth all meats. The belly goes into your mind. Let's get there. Let's go to Proverbs. Okay, Proverbs chapter, I think it's Proverbs 20. Let me look at it. Yeah, give me Proverbs 20 verse 27. Well, Proverbs chapter 20 verse 27. Go ahead. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Searching all the inward parts of the belly. You see that thing? The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man, guess where is it? In your mind. Your mind is a spirit. Hold this. Give me that in Ephesians 4.23. We're coming back to explain that your mind is a spirit. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 23. Come on. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Because your mind is a spirit that must be renewed with the laws of God. Go back to Proverbs 20 verse 27. The book of Proverbs chapter 20 verse 27. Come on. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Searching all the inward parts of the belly. The inward parts of the belly is the inward parts of your mind. Meaning the thoughts that are in your mind. Your belly is your mind. Go back. Sarah 36 verse 18. Book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verse 18. The belly devoureth all meat, mm. yet is one meat better than another. The belly, meaning the mind will devour all meats, yet is one meat better than another. Because all meats are not the same. That goes into what? The things you learn. The meat goes into the scriptures. You understand? It also goes into what? The other meat, which is doctrines, philosophies, lies, and vain deceit, which is of the world. The meat that is better than the meat of the world is the meat of the scriptures. Go ahead. As the palate tasteth diverse kinds of venison. Your palate is your tongue. What's on your tongue? Your taste buds. They taste different kinds of venison, different kinds of meats. Right? So doth an heart of understanding false speeches. The heart of understanding will also understand false speeches. Hebrews 5 and 12. Your, the heart of understanding, because the mind to receive understanding, you need the laws of God. Okay? Hebrews 5 and 12. Let's get there. The book of Hebrews chapter 5 is 12. Come on. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Come on. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. So the meat here is going into what? The heaviness of the scriptures, the parables, the allegories. You understand the dark sayings. The milk is the basics, the commandments. Thou shall not, thou shall not, which is the key to understand those things. Right? For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. He's a baby. Come on. Watch this. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. You see that strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Right? Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. That's the same thing we read. That's what we read in Sirach 36. It says, as the palate tasted different diverse kinds of venison, so that an heart of understanding false speeches. It's the same thing here. It says what? Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised.
to discern both good and evil. You understand? So guess what? The things that defile the man is what's in your mind. To get rid of the things that defile you, you must repent. You must let it go. You understand? So your mind, your spirit can taste the good venison, which is what? The laws of the most High like God. That's how you cleanse your mind. That's how you cleanse your conscience from these dead works, the sins that are in your mind. Because guess what? In our minds, we've got spirits, evil spirits. And these evil spirits, that's how we get defiled. You understand? That's why we must repent. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 15. I'm almost done. Start at verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Go ahead. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Mm -hmm. And our devices are but uncertain. You see that thing? The thoughts of mortal men, they are miserable. That's what we read in Jeremiah 17, verse 9. That their heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. That's the same thing here. The thoughts of mortal men, they are miserable. And our devices, they are uncertain. Read. For the corruptible body presses down the soul. This corruptible body, this sinful flesh, it presses down the soul. It weighs your mind down. Read. And the earthly tabernacle weighs down the mind that muses upon many things. You see that thing? This earthly tabernacle we got, it says it weighs down the mind that muses upon many things. If your mind is musing upon many things, the earthly tabernacle will have its way. So that's why we must what? We must purge our conscience from dead works. So this earthly tabernacle does not do a lot more damage than it's already done. That's what the Lord is saying right there. So we must get our minds right. We must cleanse our minds and our spirits and our souls so we can be right with the most High like God. That's what the Lord is looking for. Okay? That's what the Lord is looking for. Get that in um, Psalms 51. Psalms chapter 51. We're going to close it now in a sec. Psalms chapter 51. Read verse, read verse 10. Psalms 51 verse 10. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 10. Ray? Create in me a clean heart, O God. Mm -hmm. Come on. And renew a right spirit within me. You see that thing? And re renew a right spirit within me. That right spirit is the Holy Spirit. Come on. Cast me not away from thy presence. Mm -hmm. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. The Holy Spirit, which is the right spirit in verse 10. Is as what? And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. That's the prayer each and every one of us, you must pray on a daily. Go ahead. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation mm -hmm. and uphold me with thy free spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. The free spirit is the Holy Spirit, which is the right spirit in verse 10, verse 11, verse 12. Come on. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. Mm -hmm. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. Because you're teaching the laws of God and our people will repent. Come on. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God. Deliver me, O Lord. Come on. Thou God of my salvation. Ray. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Thy tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Jump down to verse 16. Come on. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. For thou desirest not sacrifice. Else would I give it. Read. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. Go ahead. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. That's what the Lord is looking for. He's looking for us to, to humble ourselves. You understand? To humble ourselves before him and confess our sins so he may have mercy upon us. That's why it says what? The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. We must be what? We must humble ourselves and be sorry for the evils we've done before the Lord. Our God, come on. And a contrite heart. Oh God, thou would not despise. The Lord will not despise that. He's looking for us to what? To have a broken spirit and a contrite heart. To show him that we're sorry for what we have done. Read. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Come on. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Build the walls of Jerusalem. That's what the Lord is doing with us right now. We're building the walls of Jerusalem. Spiritual walls. Come on. 
Then shall thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness. You see that thing? Now we offering sacrifices of righteousness before the Lord our God in the lands of our captivities. Come on. With burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullets upon thine altar. You see that thing? Spiritual sacrifices which are acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And with that, we say shalom. All praises to the most High God. Let's give the Lord a hand for that thing. All praise to the most high. All praise. All praise to the most high. All praises to the Lord. All praises to the Lord. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All right. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had stopped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's Amen. give the Lord a hand for that. All praise you. All praise to the Most High. All praise to the Lord. All praise to the Most High. Who's the King? Christ. Christ. Who's the King? Christ. Christ. Who's the King? Christ. Christ. What color is it? Black. 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 What color is it? Black. Black. What time is it? Water. Water. What time Water. is it? Water. 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 What time is it? Water. 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 All praise to the Lord. All praise to the Most High God. All praise to the Lord, brothers. And oh, sisters, please. all praises.